welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Thanks for listening. You know, my wife Vicki and I have owned and operated our photography studio, V Gallery, for 20 years now. White House has been our lab for the last 16 of those years, and we could not be happier. White House is a family-run business, just like ours. If you haven't already, check them out at whcc.com. And if you want to drop me a line, feel free to email me at jed at whcc.com. I've been very fortunate to grow up within a good family. My parents are high school sweethearts and have been married for almost 50 years. Their relationship has certainly seen its ups and downs, but they've weathered the storms over the years and their marriage is stronger as a result. I poke some fun at my parents a bit during this interview, but the truth is, I'm grateful for both of them. And I'm delighted to see the grandparents they've become to my own children. My family's on its own level when it comes to the important things in my life. For 20 years, my wife and I have been part of the portrait and wedding photography industry. During that time, we've found ourselves part of another family, so to speak. Arlene Cohen Evans has been a special member of that family for me. Arlene is someone I always enjoy seeing, and even if it's just in passing at a crazy trade show, she makes the effort to stop and give me a hug. She's one of the hardest working people I know, and she always has a little twinkle in her eye, almost like she knows something that you don't know yet. During this particular interview, though, it was I who knew something that she didn't know. Right before we sat down to chat, I received a text message instructing me to be done with her before 5 o'clock, as she was set to receive the first Lifetime Achievement Award from the Portrait Masters. Arlene had no idea, of course, but looking back, I'm sure it directed some of my questions. I was so excited for her, and she absolutely deserves it. And I'm grateful that she's a part of my family. This is a conversation that I've thought about having since I started. Like really? Two, like two years ago. Wow. Yeah, I sat down and I made a list at the very beginning of who I wanted to talk to. And you're on, the, on that list. Wow, I'm complimented. Well, I... Let's start off by doing this so that we don't talk for an hour and a half and then <laughs> <laughs> you never... Because we would talk for an hour and, then, and a half. We will talk for an hour and a half. At least. But t tell me, act as though we don't know each other, which is ridiculous. That but is act, ridiculous. Act as though we don't know each other and tell me who you are and where you're from and, and what you do and all that stuff. Okay. My name's Arlene Evans. I am the conference producer for WPPI which is owned by Emerald Expositions. Before that, for six years, I was director of the photography channel for Creative Live. And then before that, for seven and a half years, I was <laughs> conference director for WPPI. <laughs> so I divorced WPPI, I married Creative Live. We got divorced and now I remarried my first husband. So mm -hmm. that's where we are. So you've kind of got a here and there and back again scenario. That's correct. That's correct. I can't get out of the photo industry. <laughs> I've been in it. As much as you've tried? <laughs> haven't really tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the problem is, is I love the people in this industry. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't like the seventh grade mean girls kind of attitudes sometimes that yeah. come out. You, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Do you think that that, okay, so that piece in particular, do you think the mean girls attitude, for lack of a better term on both parts, is a result of the industry or as a result of we're people? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I think that, I mean, photography obviously is the history of the world. Essentially, everything hmm. that goes on is documented hmm. through photography. And I think that sometimes photographers feel like they're on, you know, they're doctors and they're saving the world. Hmm. And the other piece of it is, is that there's some big egos in this industry mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that rock star mentality that started probably what in the two, early 2000s, hmm. late 1990s. Did it? Did it? I'm asking. No, I think it did. Huh. I think it did. That's right. And when then, we got into the industry. <laughs> Uh, you have so I'm asking because I don't know. I'm not familiar with what the industry was like in the '90s and the yeah. '80s. 
Well, I wasn't in it at that point. I'm right. just going back by, you know, what I found when I started in 2004 mm-hmm. and what had already been established. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of people that felt pretty entitled because they were good photographers yep. and they were good instructors and they developed what somebody said was it's the ego conference. Mm. So WPPI, I don't think imaging was like that as much, mm-hmm. uh, but I think it was more WPPI. There were rock stars there. In, I do remember. The, yeah, there were rock stars and they continued through when you got in. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, you had the Jerry Gionis's and the Sue Bryce's and, yeah. you know, and these people that had made big names for themselves mm-hmm. and it, it felt a little clickish. I still think it feels a little clickish. I think, I, I think there was one year where we spoke against Jasmine Starr and I didn't know who she was. I didn't know there was a Jasmine Starr. I found out that year. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> When no one was in your class. No one was in, in our class or any other. And I was just like, well, I don't want to go up against her ever again because like her class was bursting. They had to like make another room with, you yeah. know, feed video in or something. I don't know. Yeah. but And now she's not in the photography world anymore. It's not, is it? <laughs> no. Why not? Because Sue said this last year when I talked, when I spoke mm-hmm. with her at Portrait Masters, which is where we are where we are right now, why aren't there? Or why is it not the same? What changed? Because you've been, in your jobs, you've always been essentially associated with those people. Right, I like, have been. That's who you interact with primarily. You interact with vendors and you interact with quote unquote rock stars. So you're, you know these people, you're used to these people. I am. Why, what's different now and why is it different? I don't know. Sue mentioned it this morning when she was on stage about bringing, elevating new people. Yes. yes. And I just don't think enough of them have been identified. Yes. And I don't know who they are. I look. (laughs) I wonder, is it because that, maybe I'm answering my own question in a way, is it because that now there are so many, because it used to be there was like a handful of people and they were the quote unquote rock stars. Mm -hmm. And now... So many other people can get recognition with, you know, with the internet and with social media and whatnot that, and I feel like, I feel like as a culture, we're kind of like always onto the next thing anyway. Yeah. So even if you are a a bit of a rock star these days, you last a little while and then everyone's kind of onto the next person fairly quickly. And there's many of them all at the same time. Well, the truth is though, you've got the whole YouTube, Instagram, rock star world is they don't want to talk to the WPPIs and the imagings and the... Is that right? uh, No, because they're monetizing what they're doing. Oh. And they don't need... You know, before, you know, you would... Like, Sue started at WPPI. Right. And so she needed that platform to... She probably would have been fine on her own, but she did start there. Right. No, I remember, yeah. And, you know, and and it just blew up from there. Right. These guys don't need those platforms right. anymore. Because their platforms are different. And- they're different. You know, so you have these landscape photographers and there are a lot of landscape photographers that have a million followers on wow. Instagram. Yeah. And so they're being court and they can't speak. They're not educators is a big piece of it. Um, those no, they, guys- so they can, they can create content for social media. Yes. But they're not necessarily proficient at getting up in front of a thousand people and giving an hour and a half program. Yes. And I've had a few bombs on creative life. <laughs> so you speak, you speak. I speak from experience. <laughs> it was painful. You sit, there, went, you sit yeah. there and watch and you're oh, like, Oh no. This oh is, my God. I was just this is, mortified. This is not what and I now, had in mind. And you know, then I would say to the COOC, these guys, it doesn't matter if they have a big following. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> the YouTube guys are different. They can teach. Right, because yeah. they're creating actual specific video yes. content where you yes. actually see them. It's not just a stag- static image that you're swiping through on Instagram. Right, but they're able to monetize it Either much way. more quickly. Right. Yeah, right. And so I have emailed, tried to get in contact with a lot of these. And some of them are really good. There's Peter McKinnon's out there. There's there are, um, a Bunch of guys, a lot of them in post-production. Yeah, we can name the good people. Yeah, we can. <laughs> right, but they won't answer my emails. 
so so um, so yeah so that it's a whole different platform it sounds like your job is more challenging now than it was before Oh, yeah, because I have no idea who's going to draw anymore and who right. won't. I have almost 40 new speakers for WPPI this year. 2020. 40 new ones. Yep, new ones. Who and knew? that's got to be a big number in a it's relative big, sense. out of 140. Right. Yeah, so and that's for, a big and number. And 40 of them have never spoken at WPPI before. That's correct. Right. That's correct. That was tough. and then But it's a risk, you mm. know, and I sit there and I think, okay, what's my margin of error here? Mm -hmm. And I, you know talked to my boss about it and she said you know what probably five percent are gonna bomb right i said i hope it's only five percent that's that, that would be sweet yeah that'd be uh, i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> that's, two, that's two people yeah, out of 40 i know you know what if two people bomb that'll be absolutely yeah, that wonderful would be awesome i like to think that i know what i'm doing enough to, sure. to have you know at least pull on my past experience right. and and hope that, and a lot of it's based on topic now. Before it wasn't topic, right. but I'm really conscious of what people are going to educate our audience about. So that's really important. So, you know, you've got, how many, you know, I have, oh my gosh, I have so many lighting and posing classes. Um, so I've got to make sure that there's off camera flash and there's natural lighting. You know, I mean, you have to cover all of the topics. Mm -hmm. But the biggest topic now is business. That's what everybody wants. Yeah, I have 24 classes just in business. Because, and how do you know that's what everybody wants? Well, we've done surveys, right? And that's that's really mainly what's come out of it, right? Is that they and and it's also the cycle that you can see, and I'm sure you guys see it mm -hmm. at White House as well. Yeah, there's this one to five year cycle mm -hmm. where people go, come into the industry, and you see them for a few years, and then they disappear, right? Because they can't make that's it. That's true. You know, they, yeah. they may be artistic, they may be really creative. But they're not but business savvy. They're not business savvy. Right, so do you think that they want it right now, like on a on a broader scale and in a more general sense, they want it because they're discovering that they need it? Yes, yes, I think so. Right. And they are also learning about new things, like social media, mm -hmm. you know, how do you create marketing for Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, what is the best social media to focus your marketing efforts on? Well, cause I feel like Instagram, well, social media, but Instagram in particular is, is marketing these days. Like oh, how do you market? Home. Well, it's, I use, I use inside, you know, put a lot of effort into my Instagram feed into my, ins and a little bit Facebook maybe, but I just feel, I feel like Instagram is what it is right now. Oh, absolutely. I don't, I think photographers still use Facebook, but not in the same way. Not and I don't think anybody way. uses Twitter anymore. So yeah, uh, right. in the photo, well, not, at least not in the photo for this, world. Right. right. It, you know, a lot of, a lot but, of political people oh do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we know, we do know that on the political side of things, a lot of people still use that platform, which is fine. We'll leave it to them. Right. That's um, fine. But yeah, Instagram is tailored to the photography industry. Absolutely. And, and now with Insta stories, I mean, they just yeah. keep adding features yeah. that help. So, yeah. but how do you use it and make the most of it in order right. to get clients in the door? Right. I mean, it's one thing to post pretty pictures, but what do you do with them in order to... Calls to action and things of that right, nature. Right, exactly. How do, you, how do you inject that into your right. and that, system, so to speak? Right, and... I don't know how to do that organically. Right, right. You no, it doesn't. It's do. not inherent. You just don't wake up and know how to do it. No. Right. No. Right. And you know, do you do you know Facebook Live? Same thing. You know, how do you right. how do you use that? So you do right. to actually get people to watch. Right. <laughs> well, like behind the scenes stuff. A lot yeah. of people, you know, will post that, and I find that really interesting. They're at a shoot. They're showing you what's going on, yeah. what their assistants are doing, what they're setting up, what lighting they're using, and you know, to me, that's. So that's what you're focusing on WPPI this year is in injecting a lot of business related classes yes. into the mix. Yeah. I mean, it, there's the a lot of lighting and posing though. I mean, that's sure. the second most right. popular. Right. So, and that, that to me is like classic content. Right. I mean, yeah, there's some changes to it, but the bottom line is, is that, you know, there are certain lights you have to learn how to use right. and natural lights, a whole different ball game. And, right. you know, Posing the the days of you know the hands under the chin and mm -hmm. you know they're over the and and especially in wedding, people are looking for a totally different look in wedding. They want that soft look, you know that sort of emo. I know kind it. Of, kind of look, and now you see it all the I time do. in the lab. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, you know, so many of the weddings now are in the woods with yep. sparkly lights. Everybody's in the woods with <laughs> yeah. sparkly lights. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know. I don't know what the next fad's going to yeah. be, but right now that's what it is. Right. So, you know, how do you light that? You know, how do you... Um, and then the other thing that you have to learn about lighting and posing is with the number of, you know, fragmented families now. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, four sets of parents. Mm -hmm. You've got... So how do you incorporate all these people? Right. How do you... You know, and this is business too. You know, how do you learn from the bride and groom who's allowed to be in what pictures with them? Right. So you don't have to Photoshop them so out. So you don't have to spend all kinds of time later removing oh, right. them. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So there's right. a whole checklist, checklist of things that you have to ask before you go in. Let me ask you this. I've been, I've been thinking about this question. I did not think about this before. But it, do you feel as though... What you've done in the last 15 years, okay, 2004, 15 mm -hmm. years, do you think that what you've done and what you've really excelled at in some way, especially relatively, has been thankless in that you're, because you're, you're behind the scenes, right? You're not, you're not the MC walking out on stage. You're not the rock star speaker. Right? You're not the vendor that everybody flocks to when the trade show opens. You're the, you are, you are the, but given all that, you're the reason why these things happen and why they work. Right? Like, so I'm asking, like, do you think about that ever? Like, do you ever think, I, d I don't get the recognition that all these other people are? Certainly not directly, right? You're not, no, no. you're not famous. No. Like Jerry is, or yeah, Jasmine, or any of these other people, but a lot of people know who you are, and I feel like a lot of people know that Arlene's like this is here, and this is this is occurring because Arlene's back there burning the midnight oil, doing what she needs to do to make it happen. Does that, or does that not even occur to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. You're probably a lot more humble than that. <laughs> you probably don't even think about that. Oh my God, why but they I love me. I, I, <laughs> They do love me if they get a class. Um, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. No, it is thankless sometimes. Like when, you know, a couple weeks ago when I had to let people know whether or not they got a class or they didn't get oh, a class. Right. And that's the tough stuff. That's, that's tough, tough stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I get challenged and, you know, yeah. what do you mean I don't get a class? Right. And kind of thing. And that, I, that wakes me up in the middle of the night oh. because I feel terrible. Of course I feel you do. terrible. Right. But when you have 500 submissions and 150 right. slots. Yep. Somebody's not going to get a well, class. Most people aren't going to. No, they're that's, not. That's math. Most people are not going to get selected. No, they're not. And you have to tell them. Yeah. Oh. My name's on it. Oh. Yeah. So it, it that gets a little ugly sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But the counter side to that is that I get to know people like you yeah. and Vicky yeah. and people that I can walk into something like this event and know that I've got friends here, and I met you guys through speaker stuff. Right. So, you know, that side of it balances you do have, you out. You do have a lot of wonderful relationships. There's no, there's I no, do. I just feel like, I mean, there's no question. A lot of people know you and love you and respect you. But I, sometimes I'm just like, you, you are the reason that so much happens and your name's not on the marquee. No, it's not. But it comes up in, in subtle ways. Like Roberta Valenzuela, published uh, his most recent book and asked me to write the forward to it oh, because see. I gave him his first speaking of engagement, course. you know? Yeah, you um, gave him a shot. Yeah, I gave him a shot. Right. And I can, you know, even somebody like Sal Sankata who gave me a lot of grief when I went back to WPPI this time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then he turned around and apologized to me and he said, you gave me my first speaking shot. Well, and good I'm like, for him yeah. and for I'm you. Like, you know, right. Don't bad Well, because me. that's the other piece. You're, you, I control you, all of the puppeteer. You, you have a lot of power yeah. behind those scenes. Yeah, and don't piss me off. No. <laughs> I hope I never have. You I'll, never I'll, have. I'll try ever, ever. to. No, that was a rhetorical statement. <laughs> For everybody. Yeah, right. But, but people that challenge me yeah. on what I do, I'm not saying I'm right, but... I have a gut feeling about something, and if I fail, I fail. Mm. But don't tell me that I'm doing the wrong programming. Right. Or I'm adding the wrong classes right. Right. because I I hold grudges. No, I don't. 
<laughs> but I'll think twice about giving you another class. Right. Well, b- well, because you're you're shrewd, right? Like you you don't do this half-assed. You don't oh, do this no, half-hazard. No. no. Why does it mean so much to you? Ooh. <laughs> Ask my husband that. He asked me. That. No. Yeah, when she <laughs> like, was here. Why? We get yeah, quick he, transition. Uh, right? yeah. he he's actually incredibly support. I put in a lot of hours. Yeah. And I thought, oh, working remotely, you know, because I'm in Seattle, the office is in New York. Sure. That um, nobody's watching me. I don't get out of my chair for hours. He'll text me and say, "Are you alive?" <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no, I I am. I don't know why I'm so de- devoted. You know, I. I don't. Is I it, never had it, any interest in pho- photography. But is it in your nature to be dev- to? Is it? Are you just a hard worker, or is it because of the industry specifically that you're so? No, I've passionate? always been a hard worker. You're just a hard you know? worker. Yeah, when Skip Cohen hired me, I had no photo experience at uh-huh. all. But I was running the parent association for a K through twelve, the entire school, and. I was dealing with all the events and I was coordinating all the parent committees and all that kind of stuff and working with, because I was in LA, you know, Maria Shriver, you know, was working on a committee for me and mm, that kind of stuff. Wow. So, you know, I, I learned how to project manage and I think that has done well for me. I was a paralegal before. Okay. I was in human resources mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm my degrees in creative writing, go figure. Okay. And, um, but it's, it's sort of what I've done. And the human resource is the perfect example. Sure. I wanted to work with people. With people, right. Right. I had some really bad experiences with that. Also, but learning experience, because I was working with unions and I had oh, to. Oh my, yeah. You live in a union area, I'm sure. Well, well there's no, a lot, in the, Central Illinois, there's yeah, a lot there of Yeah, there are. Unions. I mean, yeah. you've got Caterpillar down there. Oh, yeah. 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 So, you know, they carry a lot of clout. They and, do. And I was on the management side and just oh my. got my yep. butt kicked mm-hmm. a lot. Number mm-hmm. one, because I was a woman. Mm-hmm. And number two, because I was, you know, a manager. So you learn from that stuff. So did it does you develop a you thicker up. skin as a result? I mean, I, I did. Yeah. I still cry over stuff. I'm not going to lie. Okay. You know, my feelings get really yeah. hurt. Sure. And I carry a lot of Jewish guilt. Oh, my. And um, that just doesn't go away. So I do feel guilty about people who challenge me and get angry at me because yeah. I want everyone to love me. Right. And they don't. Right. But, you well, know. Well, in positions of power, they're not going to. See, and I don't look at me as having a position of power at you all. You really don't? No, absolutely not. Eh, you got a lot of. Really? You go. You think so? Well, you kind of do. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, like, well, that's true. Yeah. You, uh, but I don't consciously sit here and think, oh, I'm going to take this job back so I can, you know, be the, the queen of I think power. that's why you're so good at what you do, though, because you don't think that way. And when I was asking you the whole thing, I, I even debated whether or not I should ask you that question because I didn't want it to come out wrong. But you were kind of looking at me and I got the sense that like you don't even you don't even really go there. You don't even really no. think about it that way. I never and, thought about it. But it's never. because of this ethic. You have this hard work ethic that's so, that has been instilled in you or that like yeah, why do my you dad, why, yeah. is it from that no, my dad yeah well absolutely because i grew up and we had our own you know it was a family business we all worked at and my dad it? my dad was a my grandfather started a dry cleaning business in pittsburgh pennsylvania in like 1914 and then my dad took it over when i was a kid and we all worked at the store you had to work at the store is that so, right yeah so i'd go after school you know i would you know pick Dirty pockets from people's clothes. The, the dry cleaning was coming in. When I think about that now, I'm like, and I didn't wear gloves or anything. It's just like, <laughs> gross. Um, and then things were cleaner back yeah, then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, they weren't. Not really. <laughs> no, no. A very middle class neighbor. I grew up really middle class, uh-huh. and um, and there was you know that work ethic. My dad never finished college because yeah. he met my mom during the war, and they got married. Oh my. And um, so, it, but he worked six days a week and then did the books on the seventh day and it it was just part of how I grew up you didn't know any other way that was just it absolutely did not there wasn't an option that existed outside of hard work no no absolutely not and I think that that's that second you know my grandparents were immigrants Mm -hmm. and so first generation Mm -hmm. my dad Mm -hmm. and his siblings and they they were pushed to work really hard 
you know, you need to be educated and you need to do better than we did. And right. We immigrated from Russia and Poland and wherever right. they came from. Right. So that's why. And then all, I have three siblings and we're all the same way. You know, we all have master's degrees. My brother's a doctor. You know, it's just, that's just, it was expected. Nobody, you know, nobody gave, it wasn't like you had options. It was yeah. Like, yeah, you are going to get a college degree. Oh, right. yeah. You didn't discuss the options. No, no there were no <laughs> options. The biggest option discussion I had was what college I was allowed to go to. And because right. there were four of us, I didn't have options in right. that either. It was like, what's the cheapest state school you right. can go to? Sure. And that's what we did. Right. You know, um, I hope I've instilled that in my kids. I yeah. think I have. Yeah. My husband works really hard also as yeah. an attorney. And, um, I've got good kids and they do, they, someday they'll both be off the payroll. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> You're so close. so close. But yeah, I mean, I think that that's what it, you know, that's what it is. But the, the, look, you guys work really hard also. Mm -hmm. I think you have a better balance in your personal life. I mean, now that with the kids yeah. and you realize it's important to yep. To mm -hmm. when they're little, mm -hmm. my husband was always traveling, and we didn't quite have that when the kids were younger. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky; we're really very close to them. But um, he came, grew up in the same work ethic, and so yeah. it was always work. Work always took precedence. Yeah, I never saw my dad before I was twelve. I mean, really? Yeah. You know, well, he would he get up. He would get up at five and go to work, oh. and he'd get home really late at night. But you know, sometimes after I went to bed. And so there was a lot of time that I didn't see him and, and he was just busting his butt. Yeah. He didn't know any other way. No, absolutely not. Right. And no. we didn't have much money either. So yeah. he, I, he, he, and he was an entrepreneur as well. Oh, really? He had to work if he was going to make money. Right. 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 There wasn't that corporate backup, no, you know, no, where no. you get two weeks paid no. vacation. No, you no, know? no. You know, he, he would close the store one week a year. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And um, only because I think my mother just pressured him she into it. it. <laughs> she made him do it. Yeah. Damn it. Close yeah. the store. Yeah. But, please. but I'm sure your dad was the same way. Yeah. He didn't work. He didn't get paid. Right. That's exactly right. So he didn't know any other way. How, how long do you, how long do you want to keep working? How long do you want to keep doing it? <laughs> what am I going to do? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't, I can't. You know me well enough to know how much energy I have. I so, do. Yeah. I'm not surprised that you're still working. <laughs> I just really want to know what, what you're thinking. And because, I mean, yeah, you are a bundle that you have more energy than almost anybody I know. You bring that to the table. And so is it you just love the industry and love the people and love? I love the people interaction. Yeah. Um, it's been hard working at home. I've never done that before. Oh, so not being in an office, right. really different. Right. And you That's know how crazy things were at Creative Live yeah. and how they were at WPPI in the, in the before, old days in right. the office. Yeah. And so, and I don't have that. So that's been a, a big adjustment oh my. for me sure. to do that. But um, as long as someone's going to hire me, I'll work. Because when you say, what am I going to do? You mean like, well, what else am I going to do? Like, this is what I want to do, right? Right. I mean, you know, there are plenty of hobbies, you know, I could take up or go back to that I used to have before. Sure. But to me, there's just that satisfaction of the whole, it sounds so cheesy, doesn't it? No, but I, the I think people it, interaction. I mean, knowing you, it makes sense. Yeah. Like I, I thought this was the answer, but I figured I'd throw the question out yeah. there just because I kind of wanted you just to confirm it. Yeah. No, for it, me, it's true. And what I, else am I going to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? My right. husband's, pretty much retired at this point. Yeah. He's incredibly supportive of what I do and doesn't expect He me. doesn't want you to stop. He doesn't want me to stop because he probably wouldn't want to live with me if I did <laughs> stop. Let's be real. Oh, would you? Gosh. Would you? I no. think I would, but it's easy for me to say. <laughs> you know, he refers to himself as Mrs. Arlene Evans because... <laughs> He goes to all the photos, you know, I mean, yeah. he's, he's, you know, I'm I've lucky. seen him a couple of times. Yeah. And he, yeah. I'm lucky. He's very proud of me. So yeah. it's great. But I was oh. very supportive of his, of his career. Yes. You know, when the kids sure. were little and I decided to stay home so right. he could travel. And right. so, I mean, it's worked, it's worked both ways. I'm lucky that way. But, um, I, I, what would I do? Right. I, you know, I'm, I don't play golf. I don't mm -hmm. play tennis. Mm -hmm. You know, I love to read. I love to travel. But is that enough of a reason to stop working? Nah. I well, not for you, it isn't. No, it's not. It's not at this point. Now I feel like I'm just everybody's mother. <laughs> <laughs> I am. In, I a, am. in a sense, in a sense you are. I am. Right? You're the Jewish mother no, I, I never had. The, yeah. <laughs> and right? thank God you didn't have the Jewish well, <laughs> 
<laughs> I could probably use a little bit of that. And they're like, we're way too neurotic. <laughs> no. And you were, a, if I remember quick, correctly, you were a little bit of a bad boy, so... <laughs> You would have been grounded have been for in, life. I would have been in trouble a lot. Yeah, you yeah. would have been grounded for life. Yeah, my, yeah. my parents were mildly aloof when it came to that stuff. So I, they, they, That's uh, the greatest expression uh, ever. Well, I was trying to come up with a way to describe they them. They didn't and give a shit. <laughs> that, they didn't. They did. I, no, I, think it, I don't think it was that. They, I think they legitimately had no idea. Here, here's a quick story. Oh, oh, this oh, might not make the final different. cut, but here's That's a quick okay. story. So my parents live in the woods. Across the gully, we had like a little um, uh, fire pit area on the next ridge in the woods. There's about 100 yards in between the house and that fire pit area. And one night when I was in high school, we were all out there. We went out there all the time. A bunch of kids, you know, goofing off and doing what 17-year-old kids do. Drinking. There might have been a little bit of that. <laughs> May, per, per, perhaps. Perhaps. But my mom, the next day, like they never, they never came over and checked on us. They, ne- they just, really? I, and, I, and I promise you, I think it's because it never entered their mind that we would be doing anything that they need to check. Oh, wow. I really do believe that, you know, true or not. And here's one of the, my reasons for thinking that is that at one point my mom said to me the next day, she said, hey, you know, when you guys were over there last night, I saw, did you guys see all the orange lights? There were orange lights all over the place, like surrounding you. And they, I thought, they're not, they're not fireflies because that would be yellow. These were like orange. Did you see them? They were like on and off. And I said, yeah, those were our cigarettes, mom. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but no, you no, said they cigarettes. Were cigarettes. They were right, cigarettes. Okay, okay. I said, those were our cigarettes. And she's like, you mean like smoking? <laughs> like I the said, light bulb didn't I even said, go I off. Said, I said, yes, yes. And I don't, I don't consider, I don't consider my mom a ditzy person. I, but I think she was very green. Like, naive. Naive is a good word. Super warm. naive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and she was legitimately shocked and, and couldn't believe that I would be even interested in, in smoking. And she's, oh, how long have you been smoking? And I said, well, I stole some of dad's cigars when I was 15 a couple years ago. And I said, ever since I have a smoke every once in a while. Wow. <laughs> you know? So I didn't even get, so like back to how this began. Yeah. I didn't get in trouble. No. Because it wasn't like on her mind to get me in trouble. And I think the reason is because she was just so shocked at the fact that that was even happening. Well, you weren't breaking any of her rules because she didn't have the any rules. rules. Didn't have those types of rules weren't there. They didn't exist. Like if I would have gotten bad grades, I would have been in trouble. Yeah, more than that anyway. Right. So that's when I said I probably could have used the Jewish mother from that respect, <laughs> or at least a little bit more of that, you know, entered into the equation, so to well, speak. Well, yeah, but then my mom one night at dinner said. If I ever catch any of you smoking marijuana, <laughs> you're going to be in big trouble. And we're all like, oh. <laughs> well, then you're not going to yeah, catch us, Mom. Right. <laughs> That'll she, never happen. Yeah, right. She didn't grow up in the United States, so I, she missed a few <laughs> chapters. <laughs> Bless her heart. It wasn't her fault. Oh, goodness. But, but does that make you a better parent? I, I, think, I think the things that make me a better, better parent, like there are things that you learn from your parents because they did them. And you, and you feel like they did that right. Like the stuff you were mentioning, like with your dad and the work ethic piece, I have that too. And then I think there are things that you learn as a parent from the things that your parents didn't do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you learn both ways. Um, and so like when my dad, my dad wasn't around cause he had to work all the time. I understood that. Like he, I think he did the best he could. Mm Mm-hmm. But as entrepreneurs, like 20 years ago, when we started the photography business, I wanted to set it up in a way that we could see our kids. So now we're like, we live in our studio and I have breakfast with my kids every morning and I send them off to school. Then I walk down the hall to my office and I work remotely like you do for White House, but the studio for my wife is right there. And she's like, you know, at first I thought this would be a problem. And she goes, but now at the stage that our kids are at, I wouldn't want it any other way no. because she, well, if she has to work at night, she can walk down the hall. And then if she wants to put the kids to bed or even check on them at 11 and not, you know, walk into their rooms at 11 o'clock at night, give them a kiss, go back to work. That's not going to happen if you're, you know, a couple miles away or no. 10 miles away or whatever. Like those things just don't occur. 
So that's something I feel like I learned from my parents that didn't happen yeah. with me when I was a kid. Um, and, I, and that was something intentional from the beginning, right? So you kind of learn Oh, I, that's a wonderful lesson to learn, though. Well, and you're yeah. lucky you have the luxury of being able to do it. Right. And that came from hard work. Right. The work <laughs> ethic. And obviously, Vicky grew up with the same work she ethic. She did. She did. Her, her dad's a workhorse, too. Both of her parents are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So then you'll pass that along to your kids. Well, you try. You, you try. try. Yeah. Oh, I bet you're a hell of a dad. Well... I know you are. Uh, I know you are. And you've got great kids. Oh, and, I love those kids. Yeah. yeah. And I think that I could see you being a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> I honestly could. They, the, 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 the kids, I, 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 have, I have one reaction, you know, when ki- no, one of two reactions when kids see me. They either want to climb all over me <laughs> like I'm a, a jungle gym or they run away terrified. Because of your beard, but it's probably because of your beard. I think it is. I think it is. But I think it's all, sometimes I think it's because of my smile. Because even when I don't have a beard, which is like once every blue moon. I don't know but, if I've ever seen Yeah, you. it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so they either, they either come running to me and they want to wrestle and we have, you know, a hilarious time and we play tag or, you know, whatever. Or they they run away and like stand behind their mom, you know, whimpering. And <laughs> I can't I'm even like, imagine I that. don't know which way it's going to be, mom. It's one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even imagine that, really. You're like... Mr. Teddy Bear. Um, Let me ask you one more question. Yes, sir. I got one more. What What do you want for the industry in the next five years? What do you hope happens for all of us, maybe? I'm scared. I, I'm not going to lie. I mm. just see things changing really rapidly. I mean, you read the statistics that the camera sales, you know, in the U.S. are terrible. They're fine yeah. in Europe, but they're not. They're not good here. And yeah. how many camera stores are left, you know, like local regional, oh, right. you know, right. camera stores. They're not right. there anymore. Right. You've got the Amazons. I mean, you've got B&H, you've got right. Adorama, you know, right. who are doing that. But I see that the, I look at the trade show here at Portrait mm-hmm. Masters and I went to ClickCon in Chicago and mm-hmm. I, you know, even Shutterfest and I yeah. see. You're checking things out. Oh, I'm checking all of them mm-hmm. out. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I'm just seeing that. People don't need the huge booths anymore and they don't need, That's true. you know, I mean, and you know this better than mm-hmm. anybody because you guys always had the biggest mm-hmm. booths. So yeah, but you did, yeah. you want the coolest yeah. booth too, yeah. but they want to be able to practice their craft. Mm-hmm. So you've got the shooting bays now that are huge, you know, yeah. photo walks, you know, all these things where they give them hands on experience. So do they, yeah, the stages in the booths and the big, you know, the Canons and the Nikons, they bring on their really good speakers. And yeah. I think the education that's offered yeah. in a lot of these booths is great. But do you really need that? So where where are the trade shows going? Where so the is the conference it, going? So it just, is it just change that's scary to you? Or is it the or is it what's actually happen, happening that's scary? Is it just change in general that's scary? Or is it this specific type of change that's scary for you? Um, it's scary to me that the the model that say WPPI and Photo Plus and imaging, yeah. that model I just feel like is, is becoming obsolete with all of the smaller conferences that yeah. are coming around there. And that's mm-hmm. why I go to them. I want to learn. Yeah. I want to see that's there. I don't control the trade show, right. but maybe there are things that I can learn that will influence the conference side, which is what mm. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think that at WPPI, the last few years, the fun parts have gone away. So I want to bring some parties back, you know, those kinds of things to bring back that sense of community um, that used to be at WPPI. I mean, it was it was a family. Oh you would go goodness. every year. And yeah. you think about all the friends you made yeah. over the years. Yeah. From going to that show. I haven't missed since 2006. You're kidding me. Really? Mm-hmm. Actually, missed. I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I yeah, bet, yeah, I bet, yeah, I I bet you're, you probably haven't missed since 04 or 05 04, or whenever you 04, started. 04, yeah, because sure. even at Creative Live, I never missed a show. Right. I haven't missed imaging since 2000 and I haven't missed wow. WPPI since wow. 06. That's I go impressive. every year. Yeah, but I don't you know go, what else I would do. Right, because you're going to <laughs> no, you're going to see your friends. I mean, even before White yes. House, yeah, you know where you were there because oh, yeah. of the booth. Sure, you were there. Yeah, 
you were there. Yeah, it wasn't. Hang out. It's not something to be missed. Yeah, but don't you feel that's going away a little bit with the bigger shows? Yeah, well, it's, it's that's what's strange. It's not for me, but I I wonder if it is. You know, well, for, for the younger, for the next generation. Yeah. I mean, I'm officially in the next. I'm not in the beginning anymore. I'm. You know, it's well, been, been doing this for twenty. It's been twenty years. So yeah. it's I'm I'm. You past, started young. You started young. We did, we did. Both. And, did. And Vicky was really young. Vicky was, yeah, especially. But I I I wonder what it's if that's what you're saying. I wonder if that's true. I think it. I think it might be, right. And I I, I don't think that's just the photography industry. I think that's what I think in a lot of ways it's what the internet's doing to our society oh, yeah. in general. Right? Taking the interaction out of yeah, so, you know, they, they, I think a lot of people feel like there's an there's an awful lot that they can get from the internet, and they're right. But sometimes I feel like they think that they don't need anything other than that. Yeah, they don't need, and some of them just flat out don't give it a shot. Yeah, right, because oh, I get all this information from YouTube or I see all this stuff on Instagram. I don't need to go to a show, and then they they legitimately don't realize what they're missing out on because you don't know what you don't know. Right. But don't you think this is what bothers me is that go to the White House booth, pick up the albums, see what products there are there. Yeah, you can look at them on your website, but it's not the same same thing. Never. Go to Mm -hmm. the Nikon booth, pick up a camera. I mean, yeah, you could, you know, for what a the few camera stores that are actually left. You can find There are very many. I mean, Seattle actually has two, which is pretty amazing. Right. You've got ProCam down near you, don't you? We have Peoria camera. Oh, you have Peoria camera Mm -hmm. too, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as those go away, don't you think that people still need to touch and feel yes. what the new products are what well and i think you need the interaction with your peers in a, yeah, in, well, a in a in a more personal actually one-on-one direct way rather than just messaging people or, or commenting on posts i'm not i'm not necessarily against that stuff although i can show you a bunch of examples where i am against it but uh, not as a general practice i'm not but i i the best information and the best times that i've had we're at dinners at conferences oh, yeah. where you just happen to be sitting with somebody or across from somebody, you know, that you, that you have a lot in common with, or that you're struggling with the same thing or that they overcame something yeah. that you're in the middle of. And you of course didn't know that. Of course you did. Right. You, you spent all day listening to speakers and you're, 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 you're inspired and you're motivated. And then you sit across the table from somebody at dinner and they teach you more and give you more for your life and your business than you've gotten collectively up until then. And you go home and you're like, the best part of that conference was that dinner I had with so-and-so and and now you're lifelong friends and you're going to see them at the next one at the next one. And 20 years from now, you're going to be having dinner with that person across the table, right? Like that doesn't happen if you stay at home and rely on YouTube. No, no. Because it can't. And neither do the marriages that have come out of right. WP. It's true. Right. It's true. Right. You right. know, I mean, right. I can think of seven, eight people that met their spouse at oh. WPPI. You probably know more than that oh, in imaging. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and you don't, that's what scares me that it's going to all, mm. that part of it's going to go away mm. because I feel like that's. So you that, would say what you would want for the next five years is for kind of a resurgence Yes. In that. But I think the model's going to have to change to bring in these right. these kids, right. as I call I mean, I look at my own kids and I'll say, oh, did you talk to your sister? And they live in different cities. And, she, you know, he'll say, yeah. And I said, no, on the phone. Yeah. I don't mean text. He said, no, we've been texting. Because like, that's not talk- talking right. to your sister. It's not the same. It's not the same. And, and talking on the phone is not the same as talking with somebody in person. No. Like, they're different. Yeah, it's all different. Mm. So that's what I don't want to lose. That's what I don't want to lose from for this industry, because I think there's, like you said, there's so much to be learned Mm -hmm. in all aspects, whether it's the trade show, the conference, the new friends, people come, they meet their friends and then they room with them the next year, Right, right. you know, and they plan their dinners. So you can save money too. (laughs) I know. It's awesome. You know, but, but again, you know, especially for women photographers, I see this more obviously with Mm -hmm. women that, you know, they're more tentative entering the market yeah and so to find a friend that they can room with and go have dinner with and walk around the trade show with and pick their favorite instructors and go to these classes yeah i think it's huge because 
being a photographer is a very isolating business. It sure can be. Yeah. You know, and, and how many, I think the statistic is like almost over 80% of photographers or are sole business owners. Right. They're by themselves. They're by themselves. They have nobody. So where do you go? Right. You go to a, a convention. Right. You go to a trade show. Right. To, to meet people who are, think like you do. Right. Doesn't matter if you're in New York City or Morton, Illinois or right. wherever you are, there's right. things to be learned from everybody. And that's what scares me is going to go away. What are the dates for WPPI this year? No, uh, February 23rd to the 28th. We're mm -hmm. doing a few different things this year, 23rd and 24th. We're actually doing print competition at Mandalay Bay. It's mm -hmm. not going to be at Excalibur. It's going to be part of the main so part of the show. So it'll all be in the same place. It's all going to be in the same place. Right. And anybody can go. It right. doesn't matter what badge you have. You oh, can, good. You can go watch. Yeah. Pre-conference does start on Monday, so you'll be able to, you can walk into a judging room and then you can go and take a platform class. Um, we've increased the number of platform classes. There are still going to be photo walks and master classes, yeah. but we're going back to the traditional, you buy a platform pass. Mm -hmm. you, you'll have 54 platform classes yeah. and you'll have a fun party on the opening night, Monday yeah. night. And there'll be a, another fun activity Tuesday. The award ceremony will be Wednesday night. It's all included and obviously with the trade show. Well, that's the other thing that you miss out on if you don't go is the parties. Oh, yeah. yeah they haven't <laughs> been a, as much fun. I'm that's planning, an easy sell. <laughs> I'm, I'm planning a pretty fun party for Monday night. I don't, I don't yeah. doubt it. So, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's so, it, and so it'll be over. The, then the trade show then is the 23rd, 25th, 26th, and 27th of February at Mandalay. So we're back in the same place, which I know that some people don't love it there because there are other trade shows going on. But I think because it's going to be the third year, people have figured out the hotel, right. figured out the layout. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, right. you know, we're going to add some, you know, little perks. We're going to have charging stations all over the place for your phones. And we're going to, you know, stuff is yeah, good. the yeah. little stuff we're yeah. going to add to it. So, well, Arlene Evans, I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm really honored that you have me oh, on goodness. your podcast. I wouldn't even think of it any other way than to have you. You were you were on that first list, I'm telling you. Well, and you and Vicky are some of the first speakers that I ever met. You <laughs> yeah, know, and here we are 15 true. years later, yeah. hanging out, talking on a podcast. See, you got to so, get out and go to those shows. Right, exactly, exactly. But I appreciate, and I appreciate your friendships also. Oh, always. Um, and, you know, I've watched you guys evolve and, have kids and <laughs> it's been pretty awesome to watch so well, that goes both ways yeah, i really so. appreciate it and i appreciate you thank you the feeling is mutual